Hey, Zoo. Zoo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This one for you. And oh. for the other. Okay. The band. Uh, the t-shirts for okay. Mike, for okay. Basel, and for everybody. Trans. What is it? Uh, it's from, oh, wow. from our Fantomas fan club. Wow. On the back, there is another. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Special designed. <laughs> wow. First of all, sorry for our English. We are not. That's okay. <laughs> it's um much better than my Italian. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a typical uh, answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, but <laughs> yeah. And it's our first interview as well. So. Really? Okay. Yes. That's it. That's Thank you very much. For the interview. For the interview. Oh, no problem. <laughs> so, first. Uh, in Munchal, you seem to be the link between the percussions and voice, providing the only melodic uh, part to the music. Uh, did Zorn dictate the way you, uh, Baron and Patton, interact, or did he leave you some space for improvisation? Or was everything planned? Uh, all, all and the above, <laughs> all, all three. He, um, in the studio, it was in the studio. There was no written music. He uh, sang rhythmic parts to us, like the very first uh, riff is a uh, da 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 da. And he just sang that to me, and I came up with a chord and played it. And so parts were like that, and then there were parts that were uh, improvisation. So he would, you know, we'd improvise and go back to another part. Ah, so he was just saying the first idea, and then everybody was putting that kind of improvisation. No, he would say he would say all the ideas, but um, you know, this play this riff, then improvise, then play a different. Ah, riff. okay. Then so he just planned what he wanted and what. He left you some bars do. of your music and some bars of improvisation. Yes, yes. Oh. But it's very, um, you know, every night the sequence of events is the same, but there's room for to explore and do different things. And another one is uh, that the performance in Munchal is very powerful. And what kind of effects do you use with the bass? Uh, distortion, <laughs> like <laughs> all the time. <laughs> VOD. Uh, it's a uh, line six. Yeah, line six. And okay. um, I have actually, it, it's one pedal, but I have four. You can program distortion, so I have four different kinds of distortion. Yeah. So you know, I have very. Um, there's one that I use my usual sound, and then there's one that's uh, octave basso, a you know, very okay. low. And then there's a very high scratchy, you know, different four different kinds. And then I have um, delay pedal that has okay. like a backwards mm -hmm. delay and then kind of an echo sound. So, and then I have a piece of metal that I it scratches. Yeah, it's, the it's uh, from, yeah, it's from um, uh, percussion hardware. <laughs> <laughs> piece of a drum, man. <laughs> Oh, I'm on camera too. Can I? <laughs> After at the end, we yeah. ask. Sorry. Can <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Okay. And um, uh, your style is very eclectic. Um, what process uh, do you go through when deciding on a sound for your instrument on a particular project? You mean with different bands or? Yeah. And. Uh, it it depends on the project. It depends on what uh, the music needs. You know. When the first time we did a Moon Child, I brought you know a lot of different pedals, maybe you know two different basses or something, and we figured out what you know. And then I said, oh, I don't need this, I don't need that, and then I end up with the specific. So you would sign on sides, let's say. Yeah. What yeah. Do you need? Yeah. You ever used uh, this kind of uh, effect before this performance, the first Moon Child? Or is the first time that you use uh, a lot of uh, different... Uh, well, in Phantomas I play, I use the distortion, but not so much the delay. Mostly in Phantomas, just distortion, I think. Um, uh, usually, you know, like Electric Masada, I have no pedals, just bass, you know, clean. Um, so, it depends, yeah. What, the music the sort of decides for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's real that you use the one pedal to tune down uh, an octave of bass? 
Um, no, I mean, there's one, one distortion is like an octaver, so it's like... Um, double. Double, yeah. yeah. But to tune down, no. In Phantomos, I have... Um, I tune, I tune very low anyway. Okay. I tune like, like it's a five-string bass yeah. without the top string. Okay. So it's like B, it's a low note on bass, very low. You use the strings of a, of a yes, five string? Yes, yes. I, I get a five string and then I toss the <laughs> high string and just use the low one. <laughs> That's very powerful. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I could use a five string bass, but I like my Fender four string, so I use that. <laughs> The next is, yeah, the uh, next was the question. Well, what is your favorite bass? Yeah. Oh, my favorite bass. Well, this Fender I've been using most for the past like eight years or so. I use it a lot. So that and my upright bass are my main. Because bass. somebody was asking if you still use it, and I don't know if I'm saying right the word because I'm I, not a I bass know player. <laughs> Alembic, 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 Alembic yeah. Orion, five string. Yeah, I still have it. I used it in Mr. Bumble a lot, but I don't play it so much anymore, but I still have it. I also have a, I got a new bass a few years ago. Really, a friend of mine found it at, at her friend's house. They just had the bass in the corner, it was all dusty, and they said, hey, you want this? I'm like, yeah, sure. And it had no, you know, it was all screwed up. The, you couldn't plug it in, the jack was screwed up, and uh, there were no tuning pegs, so I, I didn't know if the neck was straight or not, you know. So I had to, I took it to the shop and the guy fixed it up and it's a, it's a guild hollow body. So it's very okay. big, large body, but like a... When you leave me, I want you to listen. Yeah, oh, I, mean, I had it fixed up. I didn't know if it would be okay and it's gorgeous. I love it. I use like uh, flat wound strings on it. Huh? So I use... Um, I, I've used it on some live gigs. I've never recorded with it, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't use it in any specific band. It's, it's kind of like a surfy funk sound. So we will wait for the next. Yeah, <laughs> how old is it? I'm not sure. It's um, it's called a Guild uh, Starfire. So it's probably the mid sixties, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And I like it's probably you know. I didn't pay hardly anything for it. I got it really, you know, so I'll give you $100 for it. Yeah, sure, we don't want it anymore. And then I was like, whoa, that's great. <laughs> so that, those are my, that guild and my Fender are my two main electric bases. But so mostly I use the, the Fender. It's Fender is? Fender Precision. Precision from? From yeah. nine, uh, 75. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, it's great. I use it in a lot of different bands, I mean, like Masada and Phantomas, and Moonchild. It's very versatile. Place. About Moonchild, uh, is inspired by the, the by the figure of Alistair Crowley. Uh, I know that it's his own project, but are you familiar with this work? And uh, what do you think about it? With Crowley, yeah, a little bit. I haven't I haven't um, dove in as much as Zorn has, but I know I know some of his stuff. So. Um, yeah, I, you know, strange. Person. Yeah, definitely strange. But I'm all for strangeness and for, you know, things that are unusual. I support anything that's unusual. So. <laughs> Keeps you know life exciting. So. <laughs> okay, you have expressed a profound dislike of monoculture oh, on yes. many occasions. Yes. <laughs> uh, what do you think? is your responsibility as an artist if uh, you think an artist has any responsibilities in promoting an alternative view of the world? This is a quite a weird question. Yeah, no, I understand. I think just to be myself, you know, um, just to, uh, I mean, you know, it's a cliche, but every person is unique, is an individual, and, and there's no reason to try to be like everyone else or to try to dress like everyone else or you know talk or create music like someone else so for me always i've you know wanted to play music that was new and unique and, and um, so i think that's the the best i can do you know? <laughs> and you know don't eat the McDonald's and <laughs> yeah. yeah. If, you, if you come in Verona, I have a restaurant. Oh, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. 
I, man, I, we just ate like an amazing meal. It's like, I love we Italian food. Yeah, in this kind of yeah. things. <laughs> so, um, uh, which aspect of surrealism are you interested in and uh, who are the surrealist artists who influenced you the most and why? Hmm. Uh, there's so many. Um, I was talking to Zorn about this, about surrealists, and, you know, uh, Andre Breton was like the main, he was like sort of the self-proclaimed, like, leader of surrealism or something, but he, you know, he had kind of a specific agenda, and a lot of people that he didn't feel fit in the surrealism, like, he kicked out of the scene, like Artaud or um, uh, Bataille, um, do you know Bataille, mm -hmm. writer? I mean, those guys are amazing, you know? So, I, I like, you know, I like some of Breton stuff. I like um, Louis, Louis, Louis Aragon. Um, uh, you know, Artaud, uh, Moonwell. I love Moonwell's movies. love all his movies. Um, you know, uh, yeah, it's quite wide. Yeah, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot. Um, uh, there's a... There's a painter, um, Remedios Varo, a Spanish one. It's really amazing. So, Max Ernst. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. His collages are really like that. Yeah. So. You should uh, visit the new Max Ernst Museum that they built in Cologne. Oh. Yeah, they built in the Brühl, it's the village where Max Ernst uh, was born. Uh -huh. So, in the house, where he was, uh, where he was going, uh, like for summer in the streets, uh -huh. they built up uh, a museum with all this stuff and picture from uh, uh -huh. her wife. Uh, Tan, Dorothy Tan. Yeah. Yeah, she's great. Uh, uh, oh, great! I didn't know. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Great. <laughs> so next one. Uh, what is the difference between composed music and improvised music? How do you approach them as a musician? Well, um, composed music is something that you can. You know, you can go home and you can work on something and you can scratch it out and rewrite it and think about it and over and over for a long period of time, you know, a week, a month, a year, you know, you can think about how you, exactly how you want it to sound, what instruments, what articulation, what phrasing, a very specific thing. So... In it, which way you choose your instrument? Uh, just by what you want to hear, I think, you know, mm -hmm. what kind of sound you want to... <laughs> you know, do I want to hear clarinet or do I want to hear, you know, tuba, you know, like, depends. And, you know, sometimes you might just write something and you don't know what instrument it's for and you have to figure out what it will work for, you know, it doesn't work for every instrument, so. Um, and then if you, if I play someone's music that they've written, I have to do the best job I can to realize play what they want to hear. Um, improvised music is, um, it's kind of the opposite mentality, you know, you have to, you want to create something inter interesting um, right there, right now, you know, like, now go, do something great, you know, <laughs> it doesn't always, doesn't always work, sometimes you're like, uh, I don't know, pick your nose, you know. <laughs> You know, it's hard, it's difficult to be, you know, but when it is great and, you, you know, if you suddenly have an idea and you suddenly create it, then that can be really, you know, uh, a great thing, just in the moment. And there's a lot of, the energy of that is, is intense, you know. Moonchild is the, the, uh, like a balance yes. between um, exactly. improvisation and uh, something that you yeah. have played and played. Uh, yeah, which is hard because we have to be very focused on the music, what comes next, you know? Like, okay, this repeats nine times, then I have to improvise it, I have to come up with something interesting. Oh, wait, okay, then I go into a different riff, okay? Then I gotta switch my pedal, and then like... It doesn't gotta... sound simple. Yeah. <laughs> but sounds great. Oh, really, yeah. Sounds great. Cool, cool. Yeah, and then like, cue cues the next part. Oh, uh, mic cues, okay, I gotta watch mic. <laughs> and then I cue Joey the next part. Oh, I gotta improvise now. <laughs> Like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, somebody Intense. says that you can find inspiration in everything, something like that. What, um, what inspired you as an artist, actually? Um, you know, I love 
to watch films, I love to I read, I listen to other music, you know, so a lot of different things. Well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, there's a great saying that um, only boring people get bored. Yeah. So, Sounds you know, it's like if I ever find myself get bored, I just do something different, you know. Mm -hmm. So I practice bass a lot. And, Sometimes that can be very, it can get boring because, you know, practicing scales, you know, but you kind of have to do that to master your instrument. But it can be, it can get boring, so you have to do something else. You have to like, okay, now I'm gonna stop that and write some music or listen to music. Go watch a great movie. And then you get inspired again, oh, now I want to practice. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could go back in time, where and when, Wow. I think maybe back to when the dinosaurs were around. Wouldn't that be amazing? Just hide it's next scary. to a tree. Yeah, it's a bit scary. Eat some, like, you know, giant mosquito. I don't know. I don't know. To me, it's so, that, it's very, it's hard to believe that that existed, you know? It's very surreal. It doesn't exist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't exist. So, yeah. It's so yeah, they okay. have, they, there is quite a confusion about. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So what do you think about the Phantomas? I mean, that's <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> Free, we speak don't. freely. We won't tell. Like, uh, he didn't release us the interview, so we oh, will yeah. not speak. But to he him. speaks Italian, you know, so yeah, yeah, hope if know. he sees the magazine, then no, we didn't write. Want no, no, we don't write magazines. It's okay. <laughs> Is it only online or? Yeah. Oh, we have a forum and a website, and so uh -huh. we are just a, a community at yeah, the yeah. end. Uh, wow. so. It's just you four? No, there are other 30 uh, people 60. outside, actually. Really? <laughs> yes. 60, and, and 60, 60 people. Wow. In the fun club. In different parts of Italy? Or? Yeah, uh -huh. all around. All around. Wow. Sardinia? Yeah, there really? are some from, yeah. So yes. if you want to go there, just, uh, write, just write to us, we will find you okay. <laughs> accommodation for sure. Actually, I'm meeting some friends who came from Sardinia. So. Um, Phantomas is great. I remember when um, Mike first brought me the first tape, the first demo that he made mm -hmm. of, the first, of the first record, and I was like, wow, this is great. I can't wait to do it, you know? So um, I kind of wish you know, a lot of the music we've done in the last two records has been very, like, sample-based. Mike does a lot of sampling and plays, you know, sounds on keyboard, and a lot of the music is sort of built around that. And I, I kind of like it better when it's more just, like, guitar, bass, drums, and voice, you know, like, more like the first uh, album. But, you know, he's always coming up with new ideas, so I don't know what will be next, you know. Yeah. I have no Surprise. idea. I have no idea. You play. You only play with us. Yeah, yeah. He <laughs> sends me the music and then I learn it. I'm like, okay. So you, you want you me to do that? Know. Okay. So you, you don't have a. I think it's a bad idea, but. Uh. So you don't have a kind of active part inside Phantomas? It's just like. Not so much, not so much. Um, you know, when we rehearse sometimes, we work on things together, figure out what. Maybe Mike wrote something that didn't exactly work or or once we play it live you know once we play in the together we realize uh, it's better you know maybe I have a different idea or something but mostly it's it's his, his project, project his vision so I try to you know that's like and it, there's almost no improvisation in that music it's very specific even like drum parts like you know. but you and Dave Lombardo are the backbone of this project because uh, Mm. Every sound of Mike uh, make is uh, on your sound. Uh, you are the backbone, right? Right. In which he can uh, build. His, uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. What about Bangu? Bangu? No, no Bangu. No Bangu. <laughs> Bangu. Bangu. Because we were collecting all the yeah. questions from all the people. And Oh uh, yeah. I'll, I'll ask whatever you want. I was afraid, you know, I knew it was a Phantomas thing, so I thought you would say like, you know, so how do you write the music? And I, thought, I don't know, Mike writes the music. <laughs> so how do you, you know, people ask me questions that we can't answer because 
we are kind of in love with Mr. Bundy as well. So uh, we, if you want to ask me about no, Mr. Bundy, no, no, it's, it's, it's okay. It's 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 we are not ready now. We left at home all the questions about Franco. <laughs> There's nothing to say. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> you enjoyed Bango anyway. Yeah, yeah. This is the best. Yeah. <laughs> We still enjoy to listen all the records. Yeah. <laughs> so, thanks, thanks. And uh, he was he um, throwed you a wig in when you played in Venice. Oh uh, yes. <laughs> and I got a video. Yeah, yeah, it's with mine. It. With this gum. <laughs> oh yeah, and the the DVD with the wig on the cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I is right that address so what's that? I I give the, the DVD at oh, yes. uh, Bolo in Bologna. I oh. give it to Luca Timai. Okay. But I ship uh, I send it uh, all, all, uh, last year I think yeah. uh, to the address of your uh, website. Yes, that's right. Yeah. You yeah. have two copies. <laughs> <laughs> So do you have any solo project lined up for the future? Uh, you com uh, composing any music? Uh, yeah, kind of? I'm, well, I just have a new CD that just came out with me and the harp player. Shelly Morgan, yeah. So, do you know uh, Chris Speed? He's a saxophone player. Um, he lives in Brooklyn, New York, and he's played a lot of different, uh, kind of more... Chris? Chris Speed, yeah. He has a band uh, called Yeah No, and uh, he plays with Jim Black, his drummer, a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. But anyway, he started this new record label called Skrull, Skrull Records, and um, it's mostly like a lot of people, friends who know each other who live in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and so we just, uh, Shelly and I put a CD out on his label. So it's improvised, just bass and harp. Totally acoustic live show. Hi, ah, yeah, we had a question about this before. Okay. So, Christophe Tani? No. Okay. Can you make uh, some lines for the fan club? Yeah. I have a white. I have a oh, white you mean paper. a. Some uh, a signature or a signature dedication uh, to the. Whatever you think, right. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Send away, send away for the it was planned to see me put a scene. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Thanks for that. Ah, thank you. Thanks for waiting. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. So is the is the website on the t shirt? I no, don't think so. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Julian. Good luck. Website is uh, it's called with Phantom's name, but at the end we are just 
covering a wider. Oh, <laughs> not just like, fans. No. Oh, okay. We decided like for Phantomas because it was Phantomas. the moment of Phantomas, so we just said, okay, let's use this one. <laughs> right, right. There's a lot of uh, branches. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it's quite irritating to keep just me. It's not possible to change every month. <laughs> 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 just keep one. The site, the second is the forum. Okay. And the third is my meme. Okay, great, great. Amenaza. Okay, Amenaza. Okay. First web net. Yeah. Delirium Fastmas. <laughs> great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>